Hi guys, it's Joe here and today I'm in South Wales taking a look at this holiday camp where I am now. In the 1920s it was thought uh, that some sort of place was needed to give respite to the sons of miners and so this place was built. The idea being that they could come here, they could breathe some fresh air, they're close to the seafront, uh, there's even a swimming pool, a sports hall, it basically gives them everything that they need uh, not to be in or around the mines, just a bit of uh, relaxation time I suppose. So on the site here we've got a church, as I said the swimming pool, a sports hall, um, kitchen, accommodation, quite a few areas. So today we're going to be taking a look at what remains here. Now it was designed for up to 200 boys and it's a three and a half acre site so it's pretty big. Although in the last 20 years a lot of the uh, unsafe buildings or the ones that are in the worst condition uh, were demolished and then in 2010 the site um, was put up for auction although nobody bought it so we're not too sure what the future of this site is but we're going to be taking a look at what still remains today. So this building is the church or chapel it looks pretty impressive from the outside I see no windows are left in it let's take a look inside Wow, look at that. Seems much bigger in here. The original roof of the building. Back in the day, of course, all would have been done by hand. No machinery or anything like that. Looks like this is where the altar would have been. Although, uh, looks like it's seen better days at, at this end of the church. Looks like there's perhaps been a fire. It's burnt the roof off of this part. Spin back around. Yeah, what an impressive sight. But it wasn't just the miners' boys who visited. Prince Philip went on a royal visit to the site in 1968, where he visited the gymnasium. got a huge, what well, looks like a boiler there. Not sure exactly what it would have been for. That either would have been some heating for the site, or what I think is perhaps more likely is for this swimming pool, as it's right next to it. Of course, you're not going to be swimming in this anytime soon, but uh, it makes sense that the water might have been slightly heated here. Of course, it's Wales, but it's not known for its warm summers. Imagine it's sort of, this would have been quite a nice treat to go on holiday here when you're used to being in the coal mines. Some daylight, some fresh air, some time in the swimming pool. And go along here, there's a number on the floor, yeah, 34. Yeah. We've got the chapel over there and in the centre of the site over here we have the cenotaph. Here we go. It's got the date on there, 1930, when it was built. If we uh, take a look around this side. Now this is dedicated to all of the men who died in both World War I and World War II. You can see obviously this side would have been updated um, after it was built in 1930. 
and following a campaign from local residents in 2011, this is now actually Grade 2 listed. So even if the whole site gets demolished, one thing's for sure, this will stay. On his royal tour, Prince Philip also visited the kitchen and dining area. So this area, I believe, would have been the dining room. A nice big space. Yeah, nothing left of it now, not even the roof, not even the windows, nothing. Nice fireplace at the end there. So this is the first accommodation block that you get to. Quite a uh, tall building. Nice roof at the top there. See as well, if I um, tilt down to the ground, you've still got all the original floor tiles in place. here. Looks like in here perhaps would have been the bathroom area, shower, toilets and that. No, nothing left today. It looks like there's been a recent fire on the floor. You can still smell it. Pretty thick walls as well. So you've got the um, kitchen and dining area there. Sports hall, which you might just be able to see behind it. You've got the chapel, cenotaph in the middle, and uh, some more accommodation at the far end there. This view is what everybody who was staying here would have been hoping for. Some greenery, the sea, and peace and quiet. As the number of coal mines declined, so did the village, and it eventually shut in 1991 and has been left derelict ever since. It was put up for sale in 2016, plans for 15 new homes and renovation for the church and caretaker's bungalow, but six years later and the site is still deteriorating. <laughs>